in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed um i was given an example of someone who would want to employ a driver to drive your children or whatever it is usually you would require that that person would have spent at least four or five years doing that why um, do you make that kind of requirement the reason is because you believe that over that five years he's made mistakes and learned from them are we together that lots of other things have happened around and that he has gained experience enough most people want to enter realms of financial prosperity listen carefully realms of the anointing and they do not have a track record of faithfulness they do not have a track record of submission they do not have a track record of prayer they do not have a track record of the study of the word they do not have a track record of discipline and diligence greatness will never happen to a man who ignores the power of a track record as a man of god nobody will listen to you just because you are anointed there must be a track record someone in your history must be able to recommend the hand of god upon your life that has been sustained for many years there has to be someone in your life who can say i know pastor alpha i know pastor Ejimi. he has been this way consistent nobody will become loyal to you just because you think you have something to offer and this applies also in business that means that even your failure is part of the reason why you will succeed you see that your failure will justify your success in the future when you come before people and you tell them i have failed before they will trust you when you come before people and say i have never failed they are afraid of your result failure stabilizes success a man of god who has never failed will seldom appreciate the disciplines and all the constraints that come with ministry the way many people talk is a sign that they've not had a balanced growth they have not failed they've never known what it means or what it meant to be in a situation of embarrassment of chaos of failure and and i don't believe that god causes failure are we together but that the system of growth with respect to our human nature believe me brothers and sisters is such that you must taste of failure not as a person as an event before you truly become successful are we together now we we have let me use you we have a very wrong mindset especially in the body of christ i'm a very positive person i am a man of faith but most times when we watch people as they seek to build a track record and we see their failures their imperfections their limitations most times we create a system of antagonism around their failure did you hear god are you sure you had god for that ministry why are you failing are you sure you heard God for that business? Why are you failing? Are you sure you heard God for that relationship or that whatever it is? We have to be careful to give people a chance to fail honorably. Are we together? We have to be very careful to give people a chance to fail. Let the brother go for the meeting and pray for the sick and then they are not healed. That experience will help him to value results. The day he sees a man of God who says in Jesus name and something happens, he will not generalize that result. Are we together? Allow the person to hold a business seminar and only five people come when he was expecting 1,000. That experience is useful for his future. Don't sympathize with people too much 
to rob them from having a track record some of you are always giving people harvest even though they are not sowing seeds and so they they you have robbed them of an opportunity to see the necessity of seed time so every time you are talking about seed time and harvest i'm not just talking of money are we together they don't pray if they are in trouble you pray for them so they don't see a need to build a personal intercessory ministry are we together they don't give when they are broke they come to you and you give them a harvest for a seed that has not no i'm not saying you shouldn't help people but if you really want people to be great allow failure and pain to teach them money is not the only thing you give you can give prayers you can give support there are times you don't stop the fire the fire purifies it will not burn the people everybody say a track record very very important there are times that you will want to pray for someone and god will prohibit you not because god does not want that person blessed god will tell that person this time around it is you i want you to taste of how it feels to spend five hours in the night when others are sleeping you always say pray for me and snore your way and then god wakes you up and say no you are praying for yourself today and after 30 minutes you want to sleep another alert with a bad news enters that forces you to be awake and you stretch and somewhere along your three and a half hours an anointing comes upon your life now one day you'll be able to tell people i was like this you see let me tell you when i look at people the basis of my respect for them is not have things be oh it's been rosy right from when we started in fact we started ministry three days we now have a music director we have choir the man laughs at you he knows that god is just comforting you before the real training starts he says you will never come and preach in his church it's not that foolish but you've been under the bridge god told you to travel somewhere you did not know assassins pursued you an angel appeared to help you he says you are a man of god you have gone through several things enough let me tell you this listen to my message knowing god experientially challenges are the valid ways to reveal god in your life you will never truly understand god until challenges reveal him to you god is a provider that only sounds like a story until you really are in a state that requires provision as a matter of life and death something about that dimension of god will be so revealed to you that even after that experience you will never go down again are we together everyone say a track record a track record is very important every ministry has a track record every great business has a track record there are certain informations that are captured in your track record your failures your tears your mistakes are we together your ignorance your endurance your passion for pursuit the pursuit of mentorship your passion for the pursuit of information all these things are part of the track record let me tell you your track record has value everything in your life will bless you tomorrow now when you pass through this season and then i discuss the next point i'm about to talk about you will see why the bible says for we know that all things everybody say all things for we know that all things work together for them that love the lord and for them who are the called according to his purpose all things all things the day you didn't eat in the night all things are we together the mistakes the failures and everything they invited you for a program and nobody was saved nobody was healed all things that embarrassment all things the extra year all things the shame and the pain the five years before admission all things the seven relationships that didn't work that made you look like the worst sinner on earth all things the bible says in the economy of god nothing is wasted he said even the fragments gather them that nothing be wasted even the fragments gather them they will be useful are we together when you eat food and the crumbs pour on the ground you don't gather them to save them you gather them to throw them but in god's economy it says keep them they are still useful so i i am i am by this review encouraging you to be proud of your pain 
don't hide it we live in a in a in a lying community of believers who and especially we men of god who always want to make it look like it was rosy every word they gave was accurate everything they said was right everybody they prayed for was healed it's not true and as a man of god of course doesn't mean you, you be as sincere as you can with the people of god it helps them to see the excellency of the power of god upon your humanity don't act in a way that discourages their journey let them know you cried the bible records the crying of jesus why didn't he jump it and just say the messiah he healed the bible says jesus was hungry he went to eat maize on sunday people tried to harass him and so on and so forth jesus was angry he went to a tree hungry demanding food jesus wept at funerals are we together jesus almost gave up the bible captures all of these things so that when he says we do not have a high priest who has not been touched let me tell you i hope you know jesus had to be a man to be qualified to be the head of the church because when the father looks at a man of god who has not prayed for one week jesus will say i've been there when i became a man and i took on the form of mortality i felt the pain what that man is going through i have a i have a record of that experience in my person and so he makes intercession on ground of that track record the reason why many people are not forgiven and never give people a chance is they are too innocent to be great the reality when i say they are too innocent what i mean is that their lives they've not been exposed to the reality of living so you can see a man with his wife and two children just crying i say what is, how can they, this man is such an irresponsible man what is he doing and the man is doing his best you don't have any child all your money came from one uncle and all of that and then one day your uncle say i will no longer take care of you and that's when you will know that your prayer that you thought was working was never working it was somebody's harvest that was making you think i pray once and the heaven hears you will now review what you have been doing and find out that you've been wrong for five years it's just that the mercy of god kept bringing somebody's harvest and so it makes you impatient at others this track record let me tell you will give you compassion is one of the things a track record does because you will have to face the reality of your humanity the best of you will still stand not qualified for the level you desire so when you get there you can look back at people and say pastor what did you say and the pastor will say we we have bills right now and you don't look at him and say where is your faith shame on you did you listen to my message faith for exploits you mean at this you have not been following me no the moment the pastor talks and is crying you will remember your 10 years ago and fetch a story from that 10 years ago shame on you as a man of god if you do not have a story to help somebody rise if you don't have a story you are not great great men are great by their stories there will always be something they will tell you are we together yes someone asked me one day and said um, have you ever prayed and it looked like God did not answer? I said, don't be carried away by the fact that I'll just say there's somebody outside and someone is shaking. Yeah, I prayed for many months under a supposed close heaven to the point that I didn't know whether it was demonic or me. No, most people will lie to you that no. No. You will pray and pray and pray and pray and no, people say i prayed and i had peace I, there were times i prayed i didn't have peace i didn't even know whether the prayer was answered or not it's the truth it's a track record that's why today i can know when prayer is answered because i i have experienced the confusion around answered prayer or otherwise god will never trust you with men if you have not been touched by the feelings of your infirmities and let me teach you something especially greatness in ministry let me tell you god will sample the experiences of the people you will be ministering to and force you to be a partaker of those experiences are we together you are called into the healing ministry 
you will find out that largely Satan will attack you and God will use that experience to help you. I have been sick. I've had an embarrassing infirmity. So when somebody says, I have a breast lump or I have this, for other people you are laughing, but for me I move with compassion because every testimony reminds me of myself. Not my neighbor, myself. Oh, I stood here and God gave me a miracle alert of 5,000 and somebody's life is a 5,000 and you came to disgrace yourself here. That's because when your parents don't have money, they give you 50,000 and apologize to you for it. Whereas somebody was sent with 1,000 Naira and Gideon's International Bible, the God that kept me, let him keep you. And the next time the mother saw that person was graduation. If you ever tell that person God is not faithful, he will look at you and laugh and say, come and look at my life. I'm a living epistle. Not just this. God used my life to write something that is scripture for men. You can look at me and read. A track record. Many of us have been afraid of creating a track record. A track record of discipline. A track record of diligence. Jesus wept. There are times, man of God, you will go behind that tree and go and begin to cry and say, Lord, is this how the ministry will be? And for the first time, you will really hear God. That's when you will know that most of the things you have been hearing is your mind. From that day, you will mark how that hearing came. And that's what you will begin to look for. And you will build a very fiery prophetic ministry based on the hearing that came from you. Your pain edited every, every haziness around your seeing and hearing and brought God's voice to you. Are we together? You need a track record in your life. God will not bring 1,000 members to you just because you believe you are called. Now, the challenge with many people is we want to inherit track records. You can leverage on a man's credibility, but a track record cannot be inherited. It is created from your daily work with God. Daily work. You want to crash and crime scriptures in one month whereas someone has had a track record of many years of consistent work with God and you just crime scriptures using a software online for one month and believe that just because you are quoting it you have the same result. No. That person was forced to learn that scripture not to do a competition but to recite it and force pain out of his life. I was told about a man of God who was diagnosed of cancer. And that man of God, the same way you take drugs, every three, three or six, six hours, he had scriptures. He, he lived literally on those scriptures. The same way you have three, three hours interval to religiously take drugs. He began to engage that even as he was treating himself medically. And now he's completely cancer free. For that man, when the Bible says, Thy word have I hidden in your heart. It's not just the issue of sin alone. I have hidden it so that I will live. You know, when people sing and say, I have seen the Lord. To me, it is never a special number. The song is very personal for me. Because I have truly seen the Lord. Someone is just crying and saying, well, I have seen the Lord. He doesn't even know. He, his mind is blank because there's nothing to relate with. A track record will do many things in your life. A track record will bring the strength of God to your weakness. Your, a track record will force you to need God. Because let me tell you, man is a proud entity. Fallen man is proud. It will take a track record to break your stony heart so that you can willfully allow God to come to a point where you say, Lord, this is no longer about my degree. If you were told that five years ago, you would argue and say, I'm smart. So God says, okay, you go ahead. And with the degree, you move from one place to the other. One day in that pain, you open to the scripture that says the race is not to the swift. That day now is not a preacher's sermon. A track record has forced light out of that. And you will kneel down and say, Lord, I know that I did well in school. But I lift up my degree and I hand over to you. And in one week, you will get a job that all your 10 years... It's amazing that when the purpose of your track record has been established, nothing stops your greatness. 
That's the reason why what I'm teaching you tonight is very important. You will listen to me. If it's not in your presence, if it's not by your hands, if it's not by your spirit, don't let me have it. For everything I need is in you. If it's not in your presence, if it's not by your hand, if it's not by your spirit, don't let me have it. The nation of Israel needed that experience of the wilderness to appreciate the deliverance of God. When they saw God deliver them, that's why till today in Israel, even those who are not born again respect God. They don't believe in Him, but they respect God. Every time they pass and they see all of those historical monuments, it reminds them, Ah, God. You need it. You don't just get compassion by saying, Kai, I am merciful. No. no. Something must happen in your life. And then the day you see someone with that experience, you can come and hold the person. Although the person is having body odor, you will remember that something like that happened to me and they ran away from me. And all of a sudden, I've shared with you my testimony when I, I used to have a fungal infection. And you know it was terrible. The students used to run away from me. If 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 I bought bonds or something, I would only pay for it and they would pick it if I touched it. So when you see me jump at our children and love people and say, How are you? Have you eaten? You would think ah, this guy is kind. Pain created kindness. I understand rejection firsthand. It's not some, some American movie that taught me rejection. I know what it means to be alone. It's the reason why the Holy Spirit means life to me. Because he was the only person who didn't run away. Ah, you are my everything. My destiny. You are my everything. My destiny. I love you. I need I love you. I need you. You are my everything. My destiny. You see, when the Bible says, Woe unto him that puts his strength in a man. For as long as life keeps pampering you, you won't get that revelation. Until everybody is calling you king of kings. Then one day, people look at you. In the pit and say crucify him and you look at him and you say were you not my classmate he say yes crucify him believing you will never come back to life the day you come back to life you will believe once and for all so if people look at you and say emoji the greatest man in the world you your pain will give you wisdom you have learned by experience that men are like a candle that can shine bright now and off the next moment there are many of us that the stability in our lives will not come from preaching. It will come from that fullness of affliction that a track record creates. The fullness of affliction that comes through the track record can impart humility on your life. You see, this pride that we all do, eh, is not something that lives naturally. Something must happen in your life so that your strength fails before your eyes nobody will need to tell you in all your ways acknowledge him it's easy to say god you are the doer but the reality is that you are still proud of everything you are doing it's difficult to have results and credit it to god it's not natural there must be something you pass through that will give you that message i want to ask you a question what have you gone through 
that has revealed God enough and built your conviction. Every name that God is called in the Bible came as a result of a challenge that necessitated that dimension of God to be revealed. What name has your own experience given God that a generation can learn because of you? A name that is not necessarily in scripture, but the name is a personal name you have given God because of what you have gone through. For the things you have done and the battle you have won only you are worthy of my praise. Hallelujah. Let's deal with the third point. I want us to pray. Write this down. The pain obtained from the place of failure will preserve you when you are successful. The pain that you obtain during your periods of failure will preserve you when you become successful. It is true. Let me tell you, brothers and sisters, success can make men worship you. The archives of your pain can be a preacher and an advisor to you when you become successful. It's your pain that will remind you you are human. Be careful. Are we good? Hebrews chapter 6 verse 15. We are discussing the harvest now. The third part is the harvest. The first is the journey of faith. Then the track record. And when you pass through this painful and most discomforting season, then you are ready for the harvest. Hebrews chapter 6 and verse 15. Read with me please. It's projected. One, two, read. And so, speaking of Abraham, after he had patiently endured, did what? Up obtained the promise and abraham after he had created a track record for 25 years that lord i still trust you obtained the promise like god said he did but not before a track record there is a season in the life of any and every man called the season of appearing is based on the law of time and chance. The Bible says time and chance happeneth to them all. You don't have to be born again. The law of time and chance is like gravity. The law of time and chance is like breathing. Every human being that comes to this earth is entitled to the ability to breathe. You don't have to be born again and then oxygen now begins to come. That's how this law is. Time and chance happeneth to them all. Listen, listen. It is dangerous to launch yourself before your season of appearing. There is something in the life of every man called the season of appearing. When your profiting now becomes evident to all. As a businessman, as a preacher, as a student, as a family man, as a career person, as a leader. The season of of your training and the track record that you create can be so painful sometimes it looks like your season of appearing will never come but i have good news for you tonight believe me according to the law of time and chance your season of appearing is coming when you look at a wall clock and it's two o'clock very soon it will be 12 o'clock but with respect to two o'clock it looks far but just be patient one second one second before you know it is four o'clock and 12 o'clock is warming up because it means that my own turn is coming i have taught you listen to my message activating seasons of favor you don't sit down and be dreaming of breakthrough you prepare for them because they will come the season of appearing will always come when you mess it up then like the hands of a clock it will go down again and sometimes before it comes your lifetime may not give that allowance again. The season of appearing. Mark chapter 4. We'll read from verse 26 to 29. Mark chapter 4. 26 to 29. And he said. This is Jesus now. 
so is the kingdom of god as if a man should cast what talk to me please should cast seed into the ground 27 and should sleep uh-huh you see time there and rise night and day doesn't tell us how long but night and day and the seed should begin to spring and grow up and he knoweth not how 28 let's see how the tree grows he says for the earth bringeth forth fruit of herself first the blade then the ear after that the full corn in the air he's teaching us how growth happens in the kingdom that genuine growth starts first with the blade and evidence are we together elijah knew this and when he was praying he told his servant go and keep checking the moment the servant saw the cloud like a man's fist he knew that the result was already on it he didn't say keep watching as the cloud expands he said quickly start preparing because if i can see the blade then the air is on the way if i can see the air then the full corn is on the way everybody say the harvest most people because of our obsession for results we do not even know how to discern when the harvest begins let me tell you this if you want to see a harvest and you want to reap the harvest there is a key that i want to teach you now are you ready it's called the mystery of joy joy the bible says he that sows in tears it didn't say with reap with joy will reap in joy joy the atmosphere that causes harvests to mature and make sure that you reap from it joy the moment you begin to see the finger of god no matter how small it is an indication that the season of harvest is already unfolding after five months of loneliness in the room all of a sudden one fellowship of four people just come and approach you and say to sin um will you mind coming to take 10 minutes praise and worship and Tosin is standing he's looking at a stadium and because of that he ignores the blade that is already coming out and you use your lack of joy to kill that seed are we together now all of a sudden something happens you have prayed for five months no favor someone looks at you and says just to bless you and you see hundred naira you suffer and write down all the units and load star 555 five, five, and load everything smiling thinking is 1000 and then you see 100 and amen you just destroy that blade there is what you do with the blade to make it an ear there is what you do with the air to make it a full harvest this is what i'm teaching you let me tell you something brothers and sisters for as long as you are crying the night remains with you it is not the morning that makes you smile it is joy that turns night to morning it's not that you keep crying and then all of a sudden when morning comes no you begin to make it happen so this gentleman goes four people and you lead praise and worship for 10 minutes and afterwards they just look at you and carry a bottle of malt and say tosin sorry oh, this is small but he just shakes your hand like he's bribing you he drops everything let me tell you what a wise person would do he will go back and check the vision where god said you will be a worshiper taking my healing power to the nations you open that notebook and open it and say lord i may not see this now but i'm already seeing you arise and therefore if i saw the blade then i will see the ear and the full grown corn you begin to engage joy the mystery of joy are you seeing that yes all of a sudden you did not have rent and they were to throw you out and you said oh god so this is how and the landlord comes and says okay i give you two weeks and he said lord shame on you that's all you can do to add two weeks a wise person will go back and say lord it looks small but not to me i see that it has to have been your hand ah. believers are cheated because we do not understand the systems of the kingdom how many grumbling pastors remain as 10 members for five years 
because they do not know how to multiply things in the kingdom and they carry their anger and yell it at the 10 members you would think they are preaching in a stadium shouting in annoyance you count the offering and everything is 150 naira and you just say what will i do with 150 naira please hey, Jimmy, look at this and god says this attitude of cynicism you disqualify yourself from growth but someone will go with the wife and say lord you called us into ministry we are doing the best this is 150 naira can't pay the bills but lord we are rejoicing before you we rejoice forevermore because we know that the god who gave 150 can give 150 million and so we rejoice are we together and while you do that all of a sudden one day somebody will come into the church and sit down and just be blessed you will never know he's a big man and one day he will tell you the church he left to come to your church and even you you'll be flattered you'll be like sir what 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 happened there say nothing god just told me to come and fellowship with you sir we are seven people i hope you know this is not a unit this is the whole church he says yes i want to stay and he will attract his seven members in the family and come and one day you'll be doing your thanksgiving and he will talk and all his business partners will come and in one year that church multiplies and they will ask you man of god how did you do it will you lie that you don't know what you will say it's god but the truth is there is a story there is a story it is that story that will help someone else the purpose of the furnace of affliction and the purpose of going through a season of track record is so that you can lift others in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed not in thee shall you alone be blessed if your blessing does not affect those around you you are not blessed your blessing is not just your money your blessing is a, an outpouring of your wisdom to other people it's amazing how people come and cry to me and talk about things and and i just look at them and i feel so sad for them and i'm grateful i went through what they are crying about so that i would have something to tell them say my harvest is coming it will never come as a full-blown harvest listen 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 ladies and gentlemen learn this learn this i believe in favor i believe in breakthrough but you must learn to acknowledge the slightest move of god in your life that indicates the arrival of a harvest i remember one of my dear friends among all of us you know friends and brothers together i remember one time when um, you know, we used to, the, the ministry used to meet in the campus, the ABU campus. One day, I was hugging someone, and when I hugged the person, I smiled, and I told the person the name of his perfume, and he was surprised. <laughs> I used it for many, you know, there are some perfumes that, oh, Lord, have mercy. Oh, Lord, have mercy. You don't know whether, let me, let me, let me keep quiet. Let me not say anything, because some of you you go and throw it use it use it when everybody laughs just say it's my track record it's my track record it's my track record hallelujah it's my track record don't be afraid years ago i was passing that joint where that mama makes akara that bend to charity and faith you know many of you think that we don't know all those places though you, you must be joking you must be joking a lot are we together and i don't know what took me to pass around that place and i saw some koinonia people and you know they were they were fairly men of god god was and ah that that thing they felt embarrassed in my mind i said look at you people are not wise just because you are sitting down under that smoke Abba. when you don't have a story of pain you will feel guilty for being great you will sit down and feel like you scammed people because someone will come to you and say what do i do when it looks like god does not hear me and say just go and have faith and feel so bad you know you didn't bless the person but you can tell the person sit down get a paper and a pen let me tell you this this is what to do every time you feel like god is not answering you praise the lord so the bible says that we should not be weary the word weary is not a bad word it's just a human word weariness is something that is part of humans are we together the, the bible says hope deferred have you read that scripture before hope deferred can make the heart weary in other words if i continue to expect 
expect a result expect a result expect a result the inability to obtain that result especially within my timing can sap away my energy are we together and then the bible comforts us and tells us that we should not be weary provided what we are doing is consistent with the patterns of god you are building a track record and he says for we will reap in due season if that's the condition we faint not that means man of god you will not continue to pastor two members forever a day will come there will be an avalanche of open heavens but that your pastoring members imagine if bishop oyedeko never had limitation in church growth he would never have understood the principle but for a long time he was taunted and that taunted nature made them to call a fast before god it was whilst the fast was going the lord showed him that there are forces called the gates of hell that can stop the church from growing are we together he took authority over it and think of the millions of people think of david Yongi Cho, who came up with the system of home cell and the rest are we together it was out of his pain think of all the people who came up with experiences today that have opened the body of christ to dimensions of christ some of them it was out of their pain so let us not be weary i made up my mind and i still do listen that as far as my destiny is concerned is satan that will be tired no i have lost the ability to give up if it is if it was declared by god then i'm getting there are we together can someone join me in that prophecy tonight that as far as god declared that i'm taking the gospel to the nations then no power no charm no enchantment no as far as god told you that you will you will you will you will rise to the highest point possible then no challenge over your life your business your career should put you down listen i'm teaching you how to trivialize your current predicaments and lift up your eyes he told abraham from where thou art lift up your eyes you don't move forward looking down you lift up your eyes you lift up your eyes you lift up your eyes i know what god told me in the name of jesus i will be a kingdom financier all i have is one cup of gary and one sugar but lord i give you praise i will continue to give i will continue to tithe every time i hear that there is a church doing something even if it is hundred naira i will go and drop it as kingdom financing seed and someone will say hundred naira your money does not count god is watching a track record a day will come when you will single-handedly build a church for god and you will remember and smile and say once upon a time i used to give hundred naira are we together a track record let's look at the life of one person and then we'll pray because god has vowed to lift us and he surely will lift us esther chapter 6 we are reading the first 11 verses now the bible talks about how many of us love the book of esther very powerful book there was no mention of a man of god in that book yet it was everything kingdom a type of christ and the church and how god lifts people the entire book of esther is one of the classic signs of how god lifts people how god lifted a village girl how god brought down another arrogant one how god took mordecai let's look at mordecai's life the bible says once upon a time men and women conspired to hurt the king and mordecai detected it and mordecai did something that the bible calls well doing but he was not rewarded i hope you know that he had the right to be offended be careful with offense it can rob you of your harvest imagine if mordecai saw the king riding on his chariots he would sit there and be angry and see her man and say her man is occupying my position oh king you would have been a dead man right now 127 provinces would have become shambles but for my well-doing but he remained there 
and continued to minister even when esther came he gave her the advice you know do this do that and then she went into the temple became queen and esther herself was almost forgetting about him look at the kind of pain don't just read that mordecai mordecai was a man who was so hot and embittered he helped a lady rise to become the king's wife and mordecai would expect that in two weeks they would wipe his tears but just like joseph he needed to have a track record are you seeing the consistency in how people are lifted the wine presser was helped by joseph but he forgot about him for two extra years. Mordecai helped Esther, Hadassah, to become queen. And she left him there. And she became almost unconcerned about the destiny of the Jews. And then, when it was time for the harvest of Mordecai, let's see how it happened. On that night, could not the king sleep? When men stop sleeping, it may not be demonic. It may be that God is walking. God is working to make sure someone's season of harvest comes. He says, on that night could not the king sleep. And he commanded to bring the book of the records of the chronicles that they were, that they were read from before the king. We're reading to verse 11. And it was found written. Brothers and sisters, the Bible says it was a chronicle of the good works of men. Was it only Mordecai's record that was there? But when it is your season of lifting, for reasons that don't make sense, God will arrange things to make sure you, are, you rise. It says that Mordecai had told of Bithana and Teresh, two of the king's chamberlains, the keepers of the door, who sought to lay hands on King Ahasuerus. Verse 3. And the king said, What honor and dignity had been done to Mordecai for this? Do you know that if Mordecai were lifted two years earlier maybe her man would not die so god had to arrange it in a way that the victory would have to be total are we together and the bible says then the king's servant that ministered to him said there is nothing done do you know the king would have the king's servant would have lied and said they clapped for him and that would have been all look at all the forces working together what honor and dignity had been done for this man and the king said who is in the court hallelujah Look at how God rubbishes enemies. Now, Haman was coming to the outer court. Haman was outside, oh, but the grace to lift a man forced an enemy to enter the court. He says to speak unto the king to hang Mordecai. Are you seeing? Haman was planning that if the king rests small, I'll finally tell him today it's time to hang that guy. Whereas God was using him, like the princes of this world were used by God. To perfect the plan of salvation are you seeing that now and the bible says to speak unto the king to hang mordecai on the gallows that he had prepared her man had prepared how mordecai would die verse 5 and the king's servant said to him behold her man standeth in the court and the king said let him come in six so Haman came in and the king said unto him what shall be done unto the man who whom the king delighted to honor. Now Haman thought in his heart, to whom would the king delight to do honor more than myself? Everybody say pride. Shout it. The Bible in the scripture that we read, it says God can bring down others, such as Haman. And Haman answered the king, for the man whom the king delighted to honor, comma, next verse. He says, let the royal apparel be brought which the king used to wear and the horse that the king rided upon and the crown royal which is set upon his head verse 9 and let this apparel and horse be delivered to the hand of one who the king's most noble princes to one of the king's most noble princes that they may array the man without whom the king delighted to honor and bring him on horseback through the street of the city and proclaim before him thus shall it be done to the man in whom the king delighted to honor ladies and gentlemen welcome to how god lifts men next verse the king said to haman make haste and take the apparel and the cause say make haste quickly make haste when it comes to the appearance is not slow it the blade may be slow the ear may be slow, but when the full-blown harvest is coming, five minutes can be too much. Five minutes. 
Joseph started seeing the blade in the house of Potiphar. But it looked like the blade, everything was aborted and he went down again. And he started seeing the ear in the prison there because he was made the head over them. But when the full-blown harvest would come, in moments, I perceive in my spirit someone has seen... Please help those outside now. Someone has seen the blade. You probably started seeing the blade five years ago. Probably you have even seen the air. But I perceive in my spirit that since God revealed this, someone is about to enter a strange season. The Bible says, And the king said to her man, Listen, make haste i tell you i sense the spirit of prophecy and take the apparel and the horse listen as thou hast said and do even so to mordecai hold on the jew the jew the jew the disadvantaged the slave i am aware he's a jew by being a jew he shouldn't even have anything he should be seated outside but Mordecai the Jew, that sister the poor, that brother the disadvantaged. Don't I know it's Mephibosheth, he can't walk, but still the favor is for him. And then he says that seated at the king's gate, he said, Let nothing fail. Since it is your enemy that suggested how you should be blessed, let nothing fail. Verse 11. Then took Haman, he prepared a table before me in the presence. In the presence. Then took Haman the apparel and the horse and arrayed Mordecai and brought him on horseback through the street of the city and proclaimed to him, Thus shall it be done unto the man that the king delighted to honor. The king, the king, any king can delight to honor a man. That means God can choose to love Jacob. God can choose to leave Joshua Selman. God can say, for I have chosen and I swear by my name. Listen, let me tell you, brothers and sisters, there is nothing you can do about a man that the king has chosen to lift. God can choose to lift men. They may not look like it. You will look at them and be angry because nothing around their life should warrant that level of honor. But God will say it's a choice. I am a king. I can choose to lift a man and I can make it hasty. My life is a testimony that God can choose to lift a man. God can choose to lift a ministry. God can choose to lift a business. Brothers and sisters, God can look at your lineage, your village, and say what has been done to this poor family that even in their poverty, they kept loving the Lord. And they said, Lord, seven ladies in that family, they are not married. He said, make haste. Create a horse, a chariot of honor. Make haste. Let five of them marry in one year. Make haste. Make haste. Make haste. That's the key word. Make haste. It is the training that takes time. The lifting is suddenly. Now, when the day of Pentecost was fully come, after 40 days of waiting, suddenly, shagata bakatoya, suddenly, 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 Joshua Selman changes. Listen, the Bible says, hear me. The Bible talks about the coming of Christ. It says, in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye we shall be changed in a moment my brother my sister in a moment that you are drinking gary today god will not ask you what business idea do you have there is a name god is called the lifter the lifter the lifter of men the lifter of men hallelujah The lifter of men. When God wants to lift you back, let me tell you, you will add the, even all the laws you are practicing, they won't add up. They won't, 
it will be clear that this one is the finger of God. Listen. Listen. When God chooses to lift you, listen, listen, I'm not teaching you cunningly devised fables. You will look left and right and your colleague is not there. You know you were not supposed to be there. Lord, what am I doing here? And God said, my choice. My choice. Listen. This series is not just about principles. I have taught you principles. I'm teaching you a prophetic dimension that God can choose to veto anything you know. Whether you know business or not. Whether you know whatever or not. God can choose to lift you from where you are and carry you up. Let me tell you this. Please hear me. If you don't believe in what I'm teaching you, you will never be great in this life. Because you see, the delays that have happened in our lives require a rapid lifting to catch up. If you move at the pace of men, your lifetime will be too slow. That while you are in Koinonia now, God is arranging men, they are discussing you. What do we do to a man who loves God? And all of a sudden, a wealthy person who has never contacted the family from abroad will say, Combo, I have never helped this family. What needs to be done? Who is in school? And they'll say, only one lady. And he said, can, can, I, can I help her? Ebenezer, thus far has the Lord helped us. Listen, he said Uzziah prospered because he was marvelously helped. God can help men. Oh. If God does not help you, you will not get a job. If God does not help you, you will move fast in this life. This our arrogance in just what we have. I have this. I read this. I know this. Thank God for them. But behold a season where God is willing and ready to lift men in a way that even the men themselves, they will tell you, look, this is, I, I don't know. Listen. This is what many people don't understand. And then when they see God lifting people strangely, instead of them to find out what is working, they can just feel, oh, they are just lucky. The lifting of God is not private to just some few individuals. The lifting of God is a season. I told you I was preparing to preach something else last week. I just laid down on my pillow and all of a sudden I saw a writing, the lifter of men. I know, listen, I may not claim I know everything about God, but I told you his anointing goes where his word is. The moment God sends a word, the anointing is there. Let me tell you, I have prayed this prophecy upon my life like no man's business. Lord, thank you for what you are doing. Yesterday, my entire prayer time was, God, help me. Your help is what I need. If you don't believe God can help men, you will suffer. Oh, let me tell you. I don't have any uncle anywhere who will say, oh, you are a young man, you are in ministry, let's support you. The lifter of men. The lifter of men. We are going to take 15 minutes find a corner find somewhere you, you are going to pray i want us to invoke this grace that it will land upon your life are we together in the next five to ten minutes i leave you alone with god lift your voice and blast in tongues and cry before god and say god lift me lift me i cry to you you are the lifter of men. Hey, lift me. Hey, lift me. Zekete parakata pata, 
Thou shall arise and have mercy upon Zion. 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 For the time to favor her. For the time to pray, pray, pray. Please pray, please pray. For the time to favor her. Yea, the set time. Yea, the set time. Yea, the set time. Shaka pakato katalakata. E preketo shaparakotos. Makata parato shoto prekete. Rekete kete kete. Lord, lift me spiritually. A new dimension of the anointing. A new dimension of fire. A new operation of the gift of the spirit. A new dimension of utterance. Access to deeper revelation. The lifter of men. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are still praying. Psalm 71, verse 21. Psalm 71, verse 21. Please, let's keep praying. Psalm 71. I like us to read together. One to read. Thou shalt increase my greatness and comfort me on every side. Listen. Don't just comfort me spiritually and leave me suffering financially. Don't just comfort me academically. Lord, increase my greatness. Comfort me on every side. Open your mouth and pray. Comfort me on every side. Comfort me on every side. Increase my greatness. For your glory, increase my greatness. Increase my influence. Increase my impact. Increase koinonia. Increase the fire. Increase the results. Increase the testimonies. Increase the salvation. Thou shall increase my greatness and comfort me and comfort me. Papa Shabarakatos, Nekalekateko Sodo Prakatos, Ekarakoto Soto Prakateliata, Shabarianda Kaskabaharakato Shebrege de Baladaba. Pray. Thou shall increase my greatness. Thou shall increase my greatness. Hallelujah. 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 Listen. I want you to mention the areas where you have not yet been comforted. Lord, thank you. By God's grace, my prayer life is okay. But Lord, my finances... Oh, by God's grace, my finances is okay. But Lord, my ministry, my life, don't keep quiet. Open your mouth and speak to the Lord. Lord, let your comfort, let your grace. Believers, talk to the Lord. Unto him that answers prayer shall all flesh come. Arise, O oh God. Arise, O oh God. Kapa, kata, kata, kata. Comfort me, comfort me on every side, 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 leketesh kabarakato sabaya. Comfort me. Pray for your academics, pray for your marriage, pray for your fruitfulness, pray for your finances, pray for your ministry, pray for your spiritual life. Comfort me, oh God. Oh God of heaven, arise. Comfort me in this season. 
You are the lifter of men. Hallelujah. John 17 verse 1. John 17. Please be serious. Some of us are not praying. You are just looking around. It's time to pray. We are activating this thing in our lives. John chapter 17 verse 1. These words spake Jesus and lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour is what? Talk to me please. The hour is Lord, not tomorrow. If you revealed it, then the hour has come. Father, the hour has come. Father, the hour has come. The hour for my lifting. The hour for my glorification. Lift your voice and pray. The hour has come to change my story. The hour has come for a harvest. Shakos kabata. Rakata barakato shekeria dabata. I decree and declare the hour has come to silence the forces of darkness. The hour has come to lift me like a trophy. The hour has come for the helpers to appear. The hour has come for the good news to go far. Hallelujah. 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 He said the hour has come. Then he says glorify. Glorify now Joshua Selman. That he may bring glory to you. Listen. Listen. I want you to pray a very honest prayer. And say father honor me. Let your honor in this season come upon my life and let it be evident to all. Lift your voice. Don't let the devil tell you you are, you are asking for nonsense. Everyone that asketh, receive it. Pray. Lord, your honor. Jacob's Katabarata. I vow that you will be glorified. In lifting me, you will be glorified. Honor my family. Honor, honor my destiny. Honor my finances. Take away shame. Take away reproach. Take away shame. Take away reproach. Take away shame. Take away reproach. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're praying. In the next five minutes, I'd like you to pray that every force, every power that is standing between Mordecai and the king, that Haman that is waiting at the court while God is preparing to bless you. The, listen, listen, listen. Look at this. Just when God was going to lift Mordecai, Haman too was at the court. They were all in the place. The lift and the destroyer, all in the same place. It's up to you to clear off the destroyer. Open your mouth and decree and declare. My enemies will not reach my helpers. In the name of Jesus, no evil report. The counsel of Ahitophel will not stop my lifters. I decree it. I declare it. I decree it. I declare it. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the Living God.
Alléluia. 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 We are going to pray for our families. I don't know about you, but let me tell you something. Because of the times I've had to counsel people, truly speaking, personally, I'm tired of what Satan is doing in families. It's, it's too bad. Satan is corrupting the testimony of righteousness. You will hear that someone is serving God, doing well, but the devil will rubbish every other person in his family. Are you ready to pray? I'd like you to take on your priestly position and prophesy lifting to every one of your family members. Mention them by name. I prophesy lifting in the name of Jesus. Prophesy to your wife. Prophesy to your husband. Prophesy to your children. Prophesy to your siblings. Lord, take away shame. That proverb, Ichabod, let it no longer be used in my family. This proverb will no longer be used. In the name of Jesus Christ. This proverb will no longer be used. In the name of Jesus Christ. Pray. This proverb will no longer be used. It will no longer be Ichabod. In the name of Jesus Christ. It will now be Beulah. It will be Hepzibah. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's pray the last prayer point and then I'll pray for you. Listen. There is a kind of anointing that can lift you above your fellows. It says, Because thou hast loved righteousness and hated wickedness, therefore God, even thy God, not another person's God, has anointed you, not informed you, anointed you with an oil of gladness that makes you above Shabalakatoya. Above. There is a grace that makes you above. Listen. Joseph was a slave. They bought him. In ancient times, they would pay for you. As soon as he entered Potiphar's house, there were many other slaves. They all had mothers too. But there was a grace. And they identified, even in the prison, lifted him. We are going to pray and say, Lord, the grace that makes me noticeable, the grace that stands me out. Listen, listen. Until you are noticed, not in a negative way, you can be doing good things, but the eyes that can discern you to bless you has not yet seen you. Lord, the grace that stands me out so that my helpers can see me, I cry for it to come upon me tonight. Lift your voice and pray. Let that grace come, O God. Shabakato soto bara la daba la bara la daba. Change my life. Change my ministry.
Lord, lift me up and let me stand by faith on heaven, stable land, a higher place than I have found. Lord, plant my feet on high. Sing it one more time. Lord, lift me up and let me stand by faith on heaven's stable land. Is Saul also among the prophets? When did he get there? Who lifted him? In Zaria, lifted from there, who lifted you? When I know your father is not alive, when I know your mother is not alive, who advocated for you? And you will say the lifter of men. The lifter of men. The lifter of men. I know him. I know him. I know him. Listen. Listen. You see, truly brothers and sisters, let me tell you this. I don't mean to be boastful, but my life is a testimony that God can lift men. When you look at my life, the equations don't add up, but for God. God can come and meet you and say, son, daughter, I have chosen. And you say, Lord, I don't qualify. He said, that's the point. I want to lift you. I want to lift your family. And you say, Lord, should I tell my poor mother that right now is at home praying for 5,000 naira? And God will tell you, she will not be like that in death. God has beautified my life. God has brought me honor and glory. God has done things in my life today that no matter how silent I want to become, I am broken and forced to go down on my knees. The prayer department prayed on Tuesday and their entire prayer was for the favor of God. Listen. Listen 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 when you see god revealing something it is because that is what he wants to do in this season god sees my heart and god knows how i have prayed that this grace will come on everybody if possible god can lift you there is space for everybody it is not god's will for one person or a few people to rise there when others still are there struggling financially struggling in in an area no no god can lift everybody together and still be glorified he has already captured your heart so there is no point being afraid the blessings will not kill you there is nothing god has put in my life today that can take his place so don't let anybody lie to you. Oh, I'm afraid if you rise, you will not love God. It's a lie. It is not his blessings that take his place in your life. It is carnality. Are we together? I'm praying now. Standing here, listen, are many people, some of you as you are standing here, you represent families that are desperately, you don't need breakthrough, you need lifting lifting takes you out of the realm breakthrough you are still there it's just that you prosper in that realm lifting takes you out of that realm 
in a way that you are looked at like the Hebrew boys were lifted out of fire and you would never know they were once there like Daniel was lifted out of the pit like Jesus was resurrected out of the grave like Joseph was taken out of the dungeon that's not breakthrough that's lifting I believe in Jesus I believe in his power and I believe that in this season that which he has shown me it is my prayer I can't assume everybody wants to be lifted because there are believers who are very careless the Bible says believe in the Lord your God he says so shall you be established he said believe in his prophets so shall you prosper there is a dimension of lifting that if you open up your heart and receive brothers and sisters let me tell you my god this is no long this is not your god my god will surprise you and do something in your life i'm not asking you whether you are walking no there, there are sermons that i'll ask you are you walking let me bless the work of your hands that's not what i'm doing today it has nothing to do with whether you are walking listen it has nothing to do with whether you are in school or not it has nothing to do with which village there are times that i can say oh lift your certificate i teach value i don't teach irresponsibility but this one is not just principles god has chosen it's a choice the king said what shall be done hey, Jimmy? what shall be done i look at my life today and i look at certain things god has done and i say if i walked this thing by my way for god's sake who is who is who, who dash monkey banana where will it come from only a man who has tasted of something can release something to you nobody can give what he doesn't have please hear me family of god i want you to believe in this prayer i'm about to pray it's not by kneeling down is by opening your heart to believe and say lord i know there is a realm there is a dimension where you can lift men and if you have revealed this oh god please let it happen to me are we together i'm about to pray for you my beautifier sing that song once twice for me sir my beautifier you have taken away the shame taking away the pain you make my life so beautiful my beautifier you have taken away the taking away the shame just like my beautifier, my beautifier, you are taking away, taking away the pain, make my life so beautiful, my beautifier, you are taking away, taking away the pain, make me just like you. I pray for you that the God the God who met me as a total nobody and by his finger I am a testimony of the mercies of God of the grace of God I stretch my hands in the name of Jesus by the spirit of prophecy that is upon me tonight I decree and declare that the grace for sudden lifting sudden lifting the word is sudden sudden lifting in the name of jesus christ 
May that grace come upon you right now. Sudden lifting. Sudden lifting. In ministry, sudden lifting. In ministry, sudden lifting. In business, sudden lifting. In your finances, I command sudden lifting. Inexplainable lifting. Strange lifting in the name of Jesus. In your spiritual life, the dimensions of anointing that you have never seen. In the name of Jesus, as I stretch my hands, may those dimensions be activated now. Be activated now. Whether it is the prophetic, whether it is the apostolic, whether it is the healing dimension, whether it is visions, whether it is dreams, I command an activation of those dimensions now. I pray for you the grace for speed I tell you that there is an anointing that is about to push you is a force to move you to the next seasons of your life I release that grace upon you now whether you are inside overflow one overflow two overflow three online I prophesy May that grace move you to the next dimension of your life. May that grace move you to the next dimension. I want to pray for supernatural finances. Listen. There is wealth that is gotten by exchanging for value. There is wealth that is gotten by being rewarded for transforming people. But there is the suffering dimension of wealth. Wealth by the mouth of God. Are we together? There is, do your business, do whatever it is that you are doing. Impact lives. Tomorrow someone will bless you. But this dimension of wealth. Many of you have had testimonies. Don't sit down and be watching people. It does not discriminate. It's a grace. It doesn't discriminate anything. I want to pray because the truth of the matter. Honestly, for many of us here. The major areas of concern is finance. By the grace of God and by the, the privilege of his hand, I know the quality of the training that you are receiving here. And I testify for many of us that we love God. I'm not in doubt of your love for God. I know that many of us serve God with all our heart. Are we together? But brothers and sisters, what good is it when you serve God with your whole life and you cannot pay the school fees of your children? And you sit down. I spoke with a dear lady who almost brought tears out of my eyes. She had gotten admission five times. Born again. Wasn't living a wayward life. No sleeping around. No nothing. Five times. But just because of a meager amount of a school fees, nobody could help her. That's how that admission kept, kept going. That lady, her colleagues are graduates now. And the lady is there. And you know, we in church... We will look at that lady now if she goes to enter a lifestyle somewhere and starts maybe doing some things that she should not do. It's easy to point fingers and say you are a stupid girl. Never condemn people if you cannot supply the alternative. Are we together? When that lady spoke to me, tears almost came out of my eyes. I said, what if this was my biological daughter? Five years, her colleagues we're now rounding up and that poor girl imagine the stigmatization on her reputation and she loves god imagine who god is to that lady she will carry five admission letters and put 
and read the scripture that says I was young, now I am old, and say, God, it doesn't add up. And she will come to us, men of God, and say, don't worry, just focus on your spiritual life. No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. Everything but th that pertains unto life and godliness. Not godliness alone. Life. I know that many of us here right now is financial issues. And let me tell you, I will be wicked as a man of God. You've heard me say this. We're rounding up. I have food in my house. But do you? A good shepherd lays down his life. Are we together? I have a vehicle that would take me home. I can put on a generator when there is no light and be worshipping God all through the night. Can you? A good shepherd is not comfortable in his own blessing alone. Until you are blessed, I am a failure. It doesn't matter who does what. If people are calling me and sending seeds into my life, my account, if that is not happening to you, then I should not rest. I don't want to make the mistake of Esther. She went to the palace and forgot she was once a villager and allowed the Jews to be suffering and did not know that God took her there for such a time. Mordecai said, don't you think? Continue to enjoy in the palace and leave us suffering. Don't you think that when they are done with us, they will not come for you? I have to pray for you. I counsel people all the time. After service now, I'm going to be waiting for hours and hours talking to people. Families that have no business divorcing. But the devil use financial issues. Some of you right now, some of you may be students, but you are fending for yourself. And yet we have the gods to tell you, don't follow any man. Don't follow any woman. No sugar mommy. No sugar daddy. No sugar everything. Yet we don't have the grace to pray that God will open up doors for you. No, we must fear God. We must stop misrepresenting God. I will be very vocal about your welfare. And let me tell you, until God blesses you, I will not rest. I don't only want you to be filled with the Holy Spirit. I don't just want you to have mysteries you cannot demonstrate with your life. And you keep pride in mysteries, mysteries. No. I want those who don't have jobs to have jobs. You can still serve God with a job. I want people who, I mean, there has to be an evidence. Hallelujah. There are many of our precious people now. So many weddings on the line. And I have the privilege to counsel all those people. And sometimes I look at them and I know that they need a miracle and they need one fast. They need the lifting of God. Imagine this, our little children right now. We have so many children in this ministry who love God with their heart and are passionate. But simply because in the whole family, nobody is lifted. Look how wicked Satan can be. A family of 25 people, all loving God, but there's nobody. They live from hand to mouth. If they eat on Monday, they are not sure what will come on Tuesday. And yet, I can leave food in my house and a nice car with, an, with AC outside and be wearing a nice cloth and have the effrontery to forget about you. I fear God more than that. If it was good and God gave it to me, then it's good for you too. Are we together? If God put something in my hand and he didn't take my heart from him, then he can put something in your hand. There are some of you, we cannot even come and visit you because your condition, you will get into debt to try to refresh us. And it's not good. Just because of the honor you have, you will go somewhere and borrow money just to honor the man of God. You want to go and pray, the needs arise. There are house rent issues right now. There are school fees issues right now. And then... The devil comes with a somebody with an option. You would think you will not say yes until the pressure squeezes you. Lift your hands in the name of Jesus Christ. My God and my King, I have cried to you in the secret. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. You have told me every time I pray, you hear me. I cry to you from the depth of my spirit. Lift everyone here financially in the name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. 
I prophesy from the depth of my spirit that the hand of God that can change someone's financial destiny overnight may that hand come upon your life in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ the Lord has beautified my life I pray for you everything that looks like shame you, you, you see me you see me shedding tears My God, I pray. I pray for every single one here. Lord, it is true that you can lift men. I cry unto you, O God. I cry unto you, O God. Please lift everybody here financially in the name of Jesus. My altar is calling you, oh God. My altar is calling you, oh God. My altar is calling you, oh God. My sacrifice. It's calling me, oh God, take my praise, oh God, take my praise, hallelujah, I'm still praying, forget about my crying, my tears are also praying for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray there are spiritual dimensions that you brought me into, not because of my prayer life, not because of fasting. Your hand came upon me and you lifted me. Lord, I bow my knees to you now. May that portal in the spirit that is opened over men in the name of Jesus I stretch my hands drink of that wine drink of that wine inside overflow one overflow two overflow three online let that fire that he put upon my life let the eyes of the eagle the eyes that see she get to go sort of be patient, we're rounding up. Let there be a strange lifting in your spiritual life. Fresh anointing to heal. Fresh grace to prophesy. Restoration of dreams. Visions. Dimensions in the spirit.
everyone here trusting God for the lifting in the area of job and career I cry to my God and I pray that between now and the end of May let there be a strange testimony in your life let there be a strange testimony in your life I pray for every business represented here I decree and declare whatever has kept it at the same level in the name of Jesus Christ may the God of heaven arise and grant that business supernatural speed in the name of Jesus Christ I pray for every family represented here whatever represents shame whatever represents reproach I bow my knees to my father and my God and I decree and declare may that reproach be rolled away like a curtain in the name of Jesus Christ I pray for all final year students and all the institutions that are writing exams we're rounding up I stretch my hands for those in probation third class 2-2 two, two. by this grace of lifting I shoot you to a new level in the name of Jesus a dimension of intelligence that you have never seen in your academics I release that grace upon you right now I pray for families where there are marital spells no one gets married no one gives birth shakos kabara kato I command those embargoes lifted in the name of Jesus. Father, you reveal to me, lying down in my room, the lifter of men. I have taken these two weeks to teach your people. Father, by your mercy and your grace, let there be testimonies of sudden liftings. <laughs> testimonies of sudden liftings in the name of Jesus. Every ministry here that has been grounded, I move you to the next dimension of impact. Every worker in this house, I decree and declare to you, this month will not end without you having strange financial testimonies. In the name of Jesus Christ, whatever needs to be done to make sure you return with your testimony, Brothers and sisters, I agree with my God and your God. May he make it happen for you. In the name of Jesus. Now, in just one to two minutes, I'd like you to thank God in your own way and say, Lord, I believe this has come upon me and I thank you. Thank you. You want to choose a song to sing for him? Go ahead. You want to just tell him thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Just do what I'm telling you to do. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. I know in my spirit it is done. I know when God has moved upon a people. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can we pray? Listen, I know our time is gone. 
But can we pray for koinonia in one minute? If you love me and you love this ministry, let's cry in one minute and say, Lord, lift us as a family. We have seen your lifting, but multiply your grace, oh God. Come on, pray, precious people. Multiply your grace. Multiply your impact. Multiply everything that can be multiplied. Multiply the miracles. Multiply the healings. Let there be multiplication. Pray. We're rounding up. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. While, while I knelt down, I saw a family that is like their dad has not been working. It's almost 10 years. Almost 10 years. Their father has not been working. He won't reach two weeks. Two weeks. 14 days. From what I saw. From what I saw. It won't reach two weeks. A strange breakthrough will come to that family. Strange breakthrough. The Lord also showed me a family that there is someone trying to go abroad. Go abroad and it's been very difficult. Very, very difficult. And the Lord is telling me, I saw like a, a passport, a visa being stamped and that person being released. I saw it in the vision of the Lord. Hallelujah. I also saw a woman, this is a mother, a mother that had, um, this is something like a kidney problem. This is a kidney, a serious kidney problem that had eaten her up as we were praying while I was just kneeling and crying before God here. All of a sudden, it was like an angel of the Lord literally put his hand into her like a tummy and brought out something. And in the name of Jesus, whoever that person is, you are coming to testify. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. What a powerful time. Now let's honor those who are about to give their lives to Christ. Please, let's... There are people here. Hold on. Please, no movement around. It's a very serious thing to God that people be saved. You have seen what the Lord has done tonight. Please, let me have your attention. There are people here in the main auditorium, Overflow 1, Overflow 2, Overflow 3, and online. You are saying, Apostle, I need Jesus in my life as a matter of urgency. Some of you love the Lord genuinely, but you need to hand over, rededicate everything to him. Wherever you are, our time is gone. I'm going to count one to five. You want to rededicate your life to Christ. You want to give your life to Jesus for the first time. Wherever you are, very quickly, I want you to make your way right now. Come to the front quickly, 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 quickly. Make your way quickly. Come to the front. Let's honor them as they come. Someone must be bold enough to come. Someone must be bold enough to come. Don't wait for your friend. God bless you. People are coming. Koinonia, you are appreciating them. Aside from overflow three, overflow one, two, you can come inside quickly. You can come inside. Join them. Join them very quickly. Please, if you are coming, rush. Rush. Jesus is calling you. He's giving you a brand new beginning. God bless you, my sister. God bless you, my brother. Keep coming. Keep coming. Hallelujah. I believe there are, if there are some more people, if you are coming, please rush quickly. I want to pray now. If you are coming, please rush quickly. Don't sit down when you need to give your life to Jesus. Hallelujah. Those of you in front here, I salute you. I want you to say after me from the depth of your heart. Say, Lord Jesus. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe in you. That you are the son of God. I believe that you died for me. You shed your blood for my sin. Those of you standing, join them quickly. Say, I believe that you are the son of God. That you died for me and shed your blood. Tonight, I hand over my life to you. And I receive your life in exchange. I declare that I'm a child of God. A possessor 
of the life of God in the name of Jesus father I thank you for this once blessed people I declare that the grace that saves the grace that keep I declare that that grace will be rested upon them now and forever in the name of Jesus I commend them to the ministry of the Holy Spirit who will open up the word to you and will grant you will give you an inheritance among them that are sanctified I declare that the experience of the ministry of the Holy Spirit becomes yours from today in the name of Jesus Christ amen and amen God bless you congratulations there's a lady waving her hand hello beloved in Christ we hope this message was a blessing to you I would want you to do something for us if you are new here kindly hit on that subscribe button for us and then like this video as well share to your family and friends to bless them because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body to their soul and to their spirit we would need you to do one thing for us too tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from and if you've got any testimony for us kindly share with us thank you for watching